In the first video I showed you about SketchUp, I really just gave you a taste of the power that it has. Well, here I'm going to show you some practical use for very easy, basic SketchUp tasks. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to generate a page of thumbnails using uh, the SketchUp modeling tools. I was looking around on Flickr and I found this image by MZ Scarlet, which is sort of three old silos with a little rectangular building in front of them. And maybe for an illustration, I want to have this sort of architecture. So I want to have three big cylindrical forms and a rectangular prism, but I don't really know how I want to compose those. So the thumbnailing process is normally when you'd do a bunch of quick drawings and kind of figure out how do you want to place the camera. Well, SketchUp is actually really great at placing the camera. So if you've got a simple subject to model like this, it's a great opportunity to dig into SketchUp. And before I get in any further, I really want to express that this is not a video on how to do SketchUp. There is tons of videos on the internet, some made by Google, about how to model inside of SketchUp. I'm not the right teacher for that. It's already out there. So what I'm just going to show you is the broad brush ideas of how I use SketchUp in my work. And hopefully then, if it's something that interests you, you can go out and find out the particulars about what buttons to press. So whether or not SketchUp is a practical tool for you to use really depends on how long is it going to take you to generate these shapes versus drawing them on paper. And since I've been using SketchUp for a little while now, usually the answer is it's faster in SketchUp. But if you're just starting out, it might be faster to draw them. So here I've made one of the cylinders, and I'm going to make a copy and another copy. And I think I'll actually move them a little closer to one another. And then the last piece was the sort of rectangular building. So in SketchUp, usually you start by drawing the floor plan first and then extruding these objects out. So obviously this is a very rough approximation. And actually, I think I'll go ahead and give it a little awning. Okay. So here I've got the basic forms and obviously not a lot of detail. So the next step is where I get to play cameraman and start framing these shots. So one of the neat things about SketchUp is that you can view your model differently through what they call styles. And these are a lot different from the styles used in Photoshop. But this is the modeling style that I use. And then if I want to make thumbnail images, I can turn on this style, which has sort of a thumbnail template. And it also makes it look a little more like line work. So I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to turn on shadows. And I'm going to set a pleasing shadow direction that'll really help my thumbnail. So now I'm going to position the camera around and set up these shots. So instead of thumbnailing traditionally, I'm actually moving the camera around like a director of photography might on a set. So say I like this one, I can actually export this. So here you see on the right, I've got my blank thumbnail template, and on the left, the 2D export I just made. So I can copy it out of one document, put it straight inside the next one. So here I've got my first thumbnail. So in striving to get a nice composition, I can mess with a few things. I can change the way the shadows are pointing, and those can have a big influence on the composition. I can also change the field of view in the camera. And this is sort of like moving the perspective points closer or further away to show how much distortion is in the image. So if I want a really extreme upshot, I would really push that field of view out and then maybe change the shadows a little bit. So I'll go ahead and grab this thumbnail. And then I'll keep moving. Maybe I'll do a real high angle, like a helicopter shot. If I wanted it to be some forlorn, wide open space composition. 
So I'll grab this. Now thumbnailing, as I've said in the past, is really just a means to an end. It's not your final drawing. It's really just a way to get ideas down onto the paper. So you can't cheat when it comes to this. So for me, moving a camera around in 3D space is a much better way for me to get ideas I wouldn't have come up with naturally. All right, I'll grab that one. If I were just drawing with a pencil and paper. Now some people are great at drawing with pencil and paper and these sort of shapes just come out when they pick up a pen. But for me, the added ability to walk around, so to speak, in the 3D space is really liberating and it gives me some ideas that I just wouldn't have come up with in another way. And so here's the final result. You see I've got six thumbnails and there's quite a bit of variety. They showcase a different field of view. So some are more of a zoom lens while others are a sort of wide angle lens. You've got ones that are way up in the sky, some that are down low on the ground. These are the kind of things that are hard sometimes to draw quickly in perspective because there's a lot of variables at work. So I'd argue that this alone is a really compelling reason to use SketchUp. The models aren't fancy. In fact, they only took maybe three or four minutes to make. But then moving that camera around makes it incredibly compelling. And then I would take these thumbnails and progress along with making my final illustration. And I wouldn't use SketchUp for the rest. But what they've done is given me a great jump on thumbnailing. So have you ever used SketchUp in an unusual way like this? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And as usual, if you got any ideas for upcoming videos, put them in the comments too. Thanks for watching.